In this question, we are given a quadratic number pattern, and we need to write down the next two terms of the sequence. So that should be fairly straightforward. So let's just quickly write it a little bit bigger here. 44, 52, 64, and 80. So let's try to get an idea of what's happening here. We're adding 8, then we are adding 12, then we are adding 16. So we're going up in 4s. Can you see that? We're going up in fours. So that means that this number would be a 20. So if you add on, um, if let me draw the dot there, if you add on 20, then this would become 100. And then if you add another four, this would mean that we are now adding on 24. So that would be 124. And so those are the next two terms, 100 and then 124. Then they want us to determine the nth term. So remember the way we do that very easy is you need to see, okay, so we did 8, 12, 16, then you go down to the next level, 4 and 4. Then all we do is we circle the first numbers in each row, and then there's a formula, there's like a special mathematical formula we can use. So for the first one, or the one at the bottom, you say 2a, then you say 3a plus b, and then you say a plus b plus c. If you've never seen that before, maybe your teacher does it differently. There is another way that you can do it, but a lot of the schools in South Africa do it this way. So what that now means is we start down here at the bottom, and so we can say that 2a is equal to 4. So if you divide by 2, that means a is 2. Then you go to the next level, which says that 3a plus b is equal to 8. So you put the a as a 2 and then you're going to get 6 plus b equals to 8. And if you work that out, b would be equal to 2. And then lastly, you go to the third level, or the top level. a plus b plus c is equal to 44. And you fill in the a, you fill in the b. And then if you work out c, you would find that it will be equal to 40. So it looks like, we'll still double check it now, but it looks like, oh, and we must remember that the general formula of a quadratic goes like this. And so we have just found a as 2, b as 2, and c as 40. But now we need to double check to make sure that we haven't made any small mistakes. So the way we check is what I like to do is I take the last number. Now I know that that is position number one, two, three, and four. So I take this formula that we've just found and I plug in position four. So I say four and four, and then I go work this out on my calculator and I get exactly 80. This gives me the confidence to know that I have done this correctly. Because sometimes you can make a very little mistake in the exam, and by doing this quickly, you can quickly see if you've maybe made a small mistake. Okay, number 1.3, calculate term 30. So term 30, that's easy. You just plug in 30, and then you work it out. And that should be 1,900. Number 1.4, quite a weird question, um, but if numbers are, it says prove that the quadratic sequence will always have even num even terms. Okay, let me show you what even actually means. We know that even numbers are numbers like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, on and on and on, whereas, okay, so these are even, and then odd numbers, they're the other ones, they're like 3, uh, 5, 7, 9. Something that's important is that even numbers can always divide by 2. For example, uh, 2 divided by 2 is 1, uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. But as soon as you take an odd number, like 3, you can't divide it by 2. It doesn't go nicely. There's always a remainder. So even numbers can always divide by 2. That is the key thing we need to know for this question. And so to show that something can divide by 2, you need to be able to take out a common factor of 2. And this one does let us take out a common factor of 2 very easily. And so that is enough evidence to say that these numbers will always be even terms. Because we were able to divide by 2 or take out 2 as a, as a common factor.